Hi, uh, it's a beautiful spring day and I'm on my way to work from my living apartment to my work apartment and I thought I would record the video on my bicycle uh, to try to save time and just to have a little fun. So, um, last night uh, about 160 emails arrived in the Flitmec inbox um, for the first homework assignment and I'd like to say first how incredibly honored I am that so many of you participate in this and how much work you all put into this it's very honoring and I'll try to live up to that so thanks so much for your participation now the main question I get when students participate in this kind of assignment is uh, why should other students grade me why don't you grade me, Olivier? I don't want to be graded by students, I want to be graded by a teacher, a professional. And uh, there are several elements to the answer. The first uh, answer is that uh, there is no time for me to grade 160 papers four times during the semester plus the final exam. Uh, there's not enough physical time, it's not possible for me to do this. Um, we designed this whole program, homework program, with this in mind, that it's only possible to do if students grade themselves, uh, grade their own peers. And so uh, it's just not doable. There's already not enough time for me to just spend time answering one email per student for a week. So there's no way I'm gonna grade a whole, a whole bunch of homework papers. Uh, second, an exam. A traditional exam where you have a question you put an answer and the teacher grades you this is not reality and so you will have to put in effort in your work uh, when you work for a company in just a few months uh, you will have to work with colleagues and some colleagues are having a good day some colleagues are having a bad day some colleagues like you some colleagues don't like you this is the actual reality of the engineering job. And so this assignment prepares you a little bit for that by taking into account that you are graded by peers, not graded by a super duper expert. Uh, and finally, I think that the opportunity to grade your peers is helpful. It actually forces you to think a little bit about the assignments and try to debug papers, try to find the errors, try to uh, quantify uh, the points for each question. So I think it's a very good thing that students can grade themselves and that it's not uh, the top of the mountain know-it-all teacher who is uh, giving students points, but the students themselves. Okay, so there are three categories for grading um, the papers. The first category is giving the general expression. And this is the most hated category, the most hated rubric in general by students, because it's very difficult to write the general expression. The general expression is the answer without any numbers in it. It's just a one line or two line expression where you have the complete final answer that people are looking for, but uh, with no numbers. It happens very often that this component is spread all over the paper in little bits and pieces. This is very bad. If the customer comes to you and tells you, oh, what if I change the parameter X? How does that affect the result? You don't want to be saying, oh, I'll, I have to do everything back again, back from, back from scratch again. You want to be able to tell them, oh, sure, let me just update this value. Actually, let me, uh, let me make a graph that shows you how your input parameter affects the final result. And so, this general formula that you have is the best tool to, uh, to do that. So you should give points in this rubric only if you have somewhere clear, in a clear way, written the general answer to the question. Um, second rubric is whether the correct numbers are put into... So somebody's on the way. A recovery team on the way to an engineer who didn't put the correct uh, final result. 
In the second rubric, you assess whether the correct numbers are put into this general equation. And this is mostly about putting the correct numbers with the correct units. As an engineer, you should not mess up radians with degrees, meters per second with kilometers per hour, and so forth. So that particular question, that particular rubric, assesses whether the correct numbers are put in the general equation. Even if the general equation is wrong, you can put all points in this rubric if all the correct numbers are put in there. And the final rubric is whether the final result has the correct units and makes sense. Check the units very carefully um, and check whether the result generally makes sense. It has some physical meaning. By this I mean it should not be more than 10 times too high or 10 times too low. Um, the engineer should always check that their result makes some kind of sense. You don't want to be calculating a thrust on a rocket that's 6 million times too high or 6 million times too low. Um, you don't want to be calculating the mass of an object that is six times the weight of uh, the mass of the Earth. So um, every time you write a result, some, something in your mind should be telling you, does that make sense? Uh, is it realistic or not? And this is what you assess in this final rubric. So even if the result is wrong, if it has the correct units and if it makes sense, then I want you to, full, to put full points into it. Then finally, you have a little rubric where you can remove points arbitrarily for presentation and cleanliness and where you can put comments. Should you remove points into this? The answer is you should remove points if you feel this is not a professional document. Uh, your colleagues in just a few months when you enter a company will send you documents and you will send your colleagues documents. You're not expecting a perfect absolutely beautiful answer you're expecting something you can work with something where when there are mistakes you can fix fix them you can identify them you can fix them quickly and efficiently um, and so if the document is very poorly formatted if it's super ugly if when you open it you feel like ah oh, why do I have to read this um, then you should definitely remove points I will not question that this is your own personal decision Finally, for the comments, what kind of comments should you put in there? Well, what do we want in this thing? Remember, we do not want students to produce documents that are absolute perfections. We do not want masterpieces. We want professional quality documents, documents that help people work. This is the goal. Help your peers get there. So if the document is useful, it is easy to read, it is easy to debug, even if it's wrong, then you should comment on this and you should um, congratulate the students for that. If, however, uh, we are not there yet, let me slow down a little bit so I don't bump into people, don't want to fall off my, bag, my bike on a video. Uh, if um, the student is not there yet, then be constructive and tell them what you would expect if you were in a professional setting, if they were your colleague, what you would expect um, to receive uh, in an email so that you can see the customer the next day and, and be confident about it. Uh, so this overall, I hope, gets you an idea of how to handle uh, grading your own peers. Uh, I look really forward to seeing all your comments. Uh, and all the grades and to answer any questions you have in the Q&A sessions on Friday on Zoom. So take care and see you later.